thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for uh, hosting what I consider to be an incredibly important hearing. I, I don't believe that we have an economy unless somebody makes something and somebody grows something. And uh, and that's what we're talking about here is our capacity to, to make things um, in America. And there's no reason if we have the right set of policies that we can't do that. Uh, that's incredibly important in Michigan, as you can imagine, as well as the whole country. And it's an area where uh, it's a very, very high priority for me, what we're talking about today. I also want to thank all of the wonderful uh, witnesses that are testifying today, and particularly Jonathan Jennings from Michigan's own Ford Motor Company, known for their commitment to U.S. manufacturing. And a big thank you, uh, Jonathan, for the incredible work when Ford stepped up to really help us deal with the uh, medical supply chain needs, PPE, and so on uh, during the pandemic. Really, really extraordinary. Um, the U.S. is a global clean energy uh, uh, country that is in a race right now. We're in a race. Uh, we know $100 billion has already been put in that race by China for electrification. We know the investments uh, that are going on around the world. We've already talked about today about the, the capacity of China now around uh, lithium ion batteries as well as solar panels and other things because of the, the investments that they have made. made. And also, our U.S. supply chain <clears throat> vulnerabilities really are happening right now, today. In Michigan, there are layoffs right now as a result of this semi conductor chip that uh, comes from one plant in Taiwan. And we certainly can't allow that to continue. So I appreciate all of my colleagues and Mr. Chairman, your comments. And we've got a lot to do together. And I just want to, before asking a question, throw out uh, the 48C, which I was proud to author a number of years ago. So pleased to see everyone embracing the bipartisan effort we have to reconstitute the 30% tax credit for clean energy manufacturing in the United States and appreciate Senator Manchin and Senator Daines uh, partnering on this. Also, Mr. Chairman, anxious to work with you and all of our colleagues on the bipartisan efforts for other incentives uh, to invest in U.S. manufacturing of semiconductor components, batteries, solar panels. There's just no reason that uh, we can't have those things made in America. And finally, I do have to put in a plug when we're talking about electrification that we need to be passing uh, new legislation to expand and reform the Consumer Tax Credit 30D, uh, which is based on what Senator Alexander and I did in a bipartisan bill last Congress. So we, we've got to be doing that as well. So, Mr. Jennings, two questions. Um, with EVs only accounting for about 2% of the vehicle market today. Um, can you talk about why it is so important to continue and expand the consumer tax credit? Uh, and also, secondly, how does that work in tandem with domestic manufacturing incentives like 48C uh, to increase the component parts we need here in the U.S.? First, uh, Senator uh, Stavanel, it's a, again a pleasure to see you, uh, especially in this forum. Um, specific to the uh, to the question around in the reference to the two percent, we know that the Americans are taking advantage of the um, uh, EV consumer tax credit today, and we believe in order for us to keep that momentum, we have to look at that additional four hundred thousand units that I believe um, your two thousand nineteen legis legislation had proposed. So for us. That is a key item that we need to continue on to uh, continue to grow on that 2% that you have mentioned. In reference to the consumer tax credit and the manufacturing credit, we actually see that as, as a one-two punch, right? In order for us to enable us to really continue on with the innovation, uh, with the investment that we have in the infrastructure, that again will, with those aligned with the other incentives, really puts us in a position to be more competitive globally. Great, thank you so much for all your leadership. Um, and then quickly before my time runs out, Mr. Platt, thank you. Uh, Mr. Platt, you are uh, uh, a wonderful leader of our steel workers. So we, we, I'm so grateful for your endorsement of our 48C bill and for all that um, our skilled workers do in, in America. And we need more jobs, <laughs> as you know, for our, for our skilled workers, good paying jobs. Uh, but I wonder if you might speak a little bit more um, about um, making things in America. Um, 
pleased to have introduced a bipartisan bill called Make It in America Act to close the loophole and uh, American uh, laws so we can be using our purchasing power to a greater extent to help drive the market. Could you take just a moment to speak about why you think it's so important that we do that? Absolutely, Senator Sabineau. Thank you very much for the, the question. And by the way, we support the Made in America Act and uh, as a union, we, we appreciate uh, your work in that area as well. But look, uh, uh, investing in America and investing in, Amer in American manufacturing creates jobs and, and uh, it, it allows for our uh, manufacturers to not only hire more people, but expand their businesses. Uh, and whenever, whenever our manufacturers expand, it, it helps our communities. Uh, it creates other jobs within the communities. Uh, you know, uh, at Ormat, when I worked at Ormat, I know uh, that uh, for one job at Ormat, uh, it uh, supplied six other jobs out in the community in, in the county where that, that manufacturing was. And, and that's, that is uh, true everywhere in this country. Um, so, you know, having a Buy America provision is there's nothing that there's no sector worker that can't be touched by that uh, and can't be uh, made better because we have these types of provisions. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.